The Chinese Communist Party is intensifying its control over public opinion, shutting down nearly 30 million WeChat accounts in a single day. Silencing the voices of the people, depriving them of any means of expression, is the modus operandi of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, and it's getting more severe by the day. Recently, China has witnessed a surge in WeChat account closures, prompting widespread outcry on the internet. WeChat is an instant messaging app developed by Tencent in January 2011, supported on Android and iOS. The version outside of China is known as WeChat. The application allows users to share text, images, and stickers with friends. It also supports group chats, voice and video calls, photo sharing, WeChat Pay, and video accounts, among other services. Screenshots from the internet show that on January 21st, a media outlet reported that on January 19th alone, 28.7 million WeChat accounts were shut down, marking a day-on-day -day increase of nearly 1,650% in account closures. As of January 20th, the search index related to WeChat account closures stood at nearly 8.5 million. Furthermore, data sources indicate that 59% of these searches came from video accounts and 33% from public accounts. Notably, video account searches witnessed an astonishing day-on-day -day increase of over 2,800%, while public account searches rose by 238%. This suggests that the majority of accounts closed on that day may have belonged to content creators rather than ordinary people. WeChat users whose accounts were inexplicably closed have been reaching out to Tencent customer service with complaints. Many of them were shocked to discover that their accounts had been permanently banned. Users have expressed their innocence, stating that they hadn't engaged in any wrongdoing. One netizen lamented, On January 20th, I opened WeChat while out and suddenly my work account was banned, citing unusual network login. If my home Wi-Fi isn't secure and my own data isn't safe, then what does security mean? Moreover, it's my work account and I haven't done anything wrong. Another frustrated user commented, It's truly absurd. On the 19th, they accused me of fraud and false marketing, even though I haven't done anything. This WeChat is solely for chatting with friends, yet they suspend my account for three days, disabling some features. WeChat's reevaluation didn't help either. On the 20th, they restricted all my social interactions. I can't do anything. Some individuals took to Weibo, another platform, to voice their grievances, with one saying, I used my WeChat for normal conversations without any wrongdoing. Why was my account suspended? Please inform me and help me lift the ban, or I won't be able to add any friends or join work groups. One user appealed to Tencent customer service, saying, Hello Tencent, my daily work WeChat has had social scene functions restricted for 30 days. This has greatly impacted me. I hope you can give me a chance, and I will definitely be more cautious in the future. Another netizen revealed that Tencent had closed down 28.8 million accounts in just one day. Users are expressing their distress, as WeChat has become an indispensable part of their lives over the years. They never expected Tencent to wield such authority, swiftly suspending so many accounts in just one day. Of course, the WeChat account suspensions continue in the following days. Some individuals even plead with the official WeChat team to show mercy and unban their accounts. On January 26, a Chinese netizen posted on Weibo saying, My personal WeChat account was, was inexplicably banned from using social scene functions on the 26th of this month. This has prevented me from attending online classes and completing assignments, significantly affecting my daily life. I've realized my mistakes in the past two days and will never add more friends carelessly. Recently, I've been following the platform rules diligently. My WeChat account is crucial to me, but I haven't been able to unban it. It's disrupting my life. I can't attend classes or submit assignments, and I can't even respond to messages from my teachers. I've been trying to reach customer service, but I can't get through to a human. My mindset is on the verge of collapse. Please, I implore the authorities to resolve this issue. I don't have eligible friends to assist with verification. This WeChat account means a lot to me, and I need to complete my assignments. Please, show some mercy. May good people live in peace. Please, I beg you. Regarding the widespread WeChat account suspensions, discussions among internet users are buzzing. Some people comment, Considering the events in Eastern Europe last night, it seems that something big is brewing. To which others retort, be careful, you might get banned for saying that. Some netizens offer a solution. Just owe 10 cents some money, they'll never ban you. 
Toward the end of 2023, the Chinese Communist authorities declared 2024 as the year for combating internet rumors. The Cyberspace Administration of China also sought public opinions to enhance the Clean Internet Special Campaign for 2024. Subsequently, there has been a surge in WeChat account closures. Public opinion is concerned that internet censorship and control in 2024 will become even more intense. According to some netizens, in reality, the most severe account suspensions lately have not been on WeChat but on Douyin. Some also claim that the news platform Toutiao has been aggressively suspending accounts. Inter Chinese internet users Chinese internet users have expressed frustration, saying, this is why they don't allow foreign social media platforms in. If foreign media were allowed, would Tencent dare to suspend accounts? And Tencent is very audacious. They suspend accounts for any reason, and then they ask you to upload personal information with your ID. In rural areas, it costs 50 yuan to obtain such information. Some suggest the need for legislation to restrict such actions, saying, there must be regulations, they can't act with impunity. Others respond, naive, do you think this is just a corporate action? And everything in the software has eyes, they are experts at this. In response to the mass WeChat account suspensions, overseas social media platforms have referred to it as a massacre. On January 20th, Zhao Lanjian, a former Chinese media personality residing in the United States, posted on an unspecified platform, stating, in just one day, nearly 30 million accounts were suspended. This has broken all historical records of mass killings in human history. Silencing means erasing voices, infringing on the right to live. The Communist Party has initiated a nationwide massacre. The era of speech terror has arrived. Some netizens mockingly suggest they should make all Chinese people mute. If they can't speak, they can't criticize. That would solve the problem at its root and China's freedom of speech means not letting you speak. Online discussions have emerged among Chinese internet users regarding the sudden increase in account suspensions. Some have been pondering what events in the past few days could have led to such a sudden wave of account suspensions. Some respondents speculate that it might be related to party leader Xi Jinping, while others guess it could be linked to discussions among A-share stock investors. Media reports have pointed out that in recent times, Chinese citizens have engaged in a continuous Great Firewall challenge across the internet, highlighting the increasing difficulty of controlling public discourse. The CCP's efforts to suppress such activities appear to be losing effectiveness. On January 17th, both the Chinese and Hong Kong stock markets experienced a severe crash, with over 5,000 stocks simultaneously declining. Angry and desperate Chinese stock investors took to the internet to express their dissatisfaction, with some even calling for a rebellion within stock trading groups. Notably, against the backdrop of economic stagnation, the CCP announced on the same day that China's GDP growth rate for the fourth quarter of 2023 had reached a remarkable 5.2%. This announcement sparked mockery from Chinese internet users in the days that followed. Internet users left sarcastic comments such as, I made over 30 million yuan by farming three acres of land in my hometown. I sat at home and traded stocks this year, making 700,000 yuan. I run a physical store and earn 1.14 trillion yuan this year, a 2.2 percentage point increase from last year. I sold all my African tilapia from the fish pond to Africa, making 70 million yuan. And I'm a street vendor and I'm preparing for an IPO. Some even expressed, seeing the country doing well makes me feel relieved. I hope it gets better and better. In 2009, the Chinese government banned Facebook without providing any explanation. Twitter and YouTube were also prohibited. Due to the ban on these foreign social media platforms, Chinese people had no choice. In the absence of competition, WeChat entered the Chinese market only three years ago and quickly gained nearly 300 million users. WeChat's adoption rate in China surpassed that of Facebook and Twitter. Over the years, WeChat has become one of the essential communication apps for Chinese mobile users, and they have become heavily reliant on it. Whether in the workplace, on the subway, or in restaurants, the familiar sound of incoming WeChat messages is heard everywhere. This illustrates the importance of WeChat in their lives. However, as government regulation becomes increasingly strict, account suspensions have become more frequent, causing significant headaches for Chinese netizens. This explains why many people, after having their WeChat account suspended, plead with the authorities and even promise to be more cautious in the future, hoping to have their accounts reinstated. 
Because of this, some Chinese netizens have expressed that they would switch to an alternative app if one were available. Although the majority of WeChat users are currently located within China, there are still a few users who use it outside China. However, every conversation of WeChat users is monitored by the CCP's internet management authorities. As early as 2020, the Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto discovered that WeChat performs real-time automatic censorship on chat images using techniques such as text recognition, visual recognition, and duplicate document detection. If WeChat detects a restricted image, it immediately blocks all users from sending that image. In February 2023, Arthur Herman, a senior researcher at the Hudson Institute in Washington, wrote an article in Forbes stating that WeChat's content censorship is just one of the issues. While WeChat only deletes content from Chinese phone users, its monitoring extends widely, including Chinese users living in the United States, such as students and visa holders. The Chinese government can access their location and other personal data through various backdoors, allowing third parties to read their sent and received messages. Additionally, CNN has reported that WeChat conversations are scrutinized regardless of where users are located in the world. Recent revelations regarding online censorship in China extend beyond WeChat. On January 28th, Zhao Lanjian posted to X a screenshot of a January 24th email from Zhejiang Unicom. The email indicated that the provincial company prompted an effort to investigate abnormal high-bandwidth broadband issues, extracting suspected broadband data from its data model. The data was then sent to various districts and counties for inspection, particularly focusing on unusual high-bandwidth cases, including billing irregularities. The inspection principle outlined was to, quote, investigate thoroughly, stop as needed, and dismantle as needed. It explicitly stated that normal broadband, primarily for live broadcasting purposes, could be retained, while other uses such as BT, NATS, and various plug-in clouds were not allowed. The email emphasized the importance of avoiding unnecessary complaints and the need for effective communication with customers to address the situation. Furthermore, it indicated that this task was under the supervision of the provincial party committee and would be included in district and county assessments. Each district and county was instructed to assign personnel to provide feedback on the inspection results before 5 p.m. on January 25, 2024. Zhao Lanxian commented that in 2024, China was entering a period of white terror in terms of censorship. This was the first piece of evidence disclosed. This information directly concerns the safety of every user bypassing China's Great Firewall. Any browsing, any speech, and even thoughts will be closely scrutinized and recorded in blacklists and files. He further analyzed that Zhejiang province was about to enter every household, dismantling broadband networks and confiscating equipment, all while compiling blacklists and files for users. He believed that Zhejiang, as a leading province in terms of economy and foreign trade, was likely to disrupt information exchange across the province due to information suppression and control measures. This disruption would impact various industries, including foreign trade, economy, and culture. It's not merely a technical issue, but a case of infiltrating ordinary people's lives. Chinese citizens are becoming increasingly chained. Zhao Lanxian also mentioned that in North Korea, people watching South Korean TV dramas often receive death sentences or decades-long prison terms. Xi Jinping has been learning and copying Kim Jong-un's governance since coming to power. Xi Jinping's heavy-handed tactics in Zhejiang are leading the way in replicating Kim Jong-un's information and speech suppression model. Now even watching content outside the Great Firewall and discussing it online may lead to real-life consequences. Some netizens lamented that there's no safe place where the CCP is present, and merely breathing could offend the CCP. In addition to existing measures, the CCP has recently intensified its efforts to control the media and block foreign information. According to a report by Radio Free Asia in December 2023, citing South Korea's Chosun Ilbo, a prominent media outlet in Shanghai known for actively translating and reporting on articles from foreign media sources such as the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Bloomberg, underwent a significant change in policy in July. Following the appointment of a party cadre as its CEO, the organization issued an internal ban on translating foreign news, requiring editors and journalists to use translations from the official state news agency Xinhua when necessary. 
The report suggests that Beijing's motivation behind this move is to ensure the unwavering transmission of the CCP leadership's messaging to the public. It is worth noting that China began blocking access to major Western media websites like Time Magazine and The Economist as early as 2016. The recent constraints on domestic media's use of foreign news sources appear to be an attempt to sever external information at the source. Analysts within Beijing's media circles have observed increasing scrutiny of Chinese media that cite foreign news reports. This reflects a highly controlled approach to managing the content of foreign media reports entering the country. Additionally, the report mentions that in recent years, Chinese authorities have strengthened their control over media coverage of Chinese leader Xi Jinping's receptions of foreign dignitaries and appearances in major political events. The media organizations invited to cover such events are primarily state-owned, including China Central Television (CCTV) and Xinhua News Agency. When reporting on Xi Jinping, Chinese media employed standardized terminology, resulting in a uniform presentation of news. A Chinese reporter commented on this situation, saying, "Today, Chinese media can only independently cover the minor matters in national affairs. The CCP has implemented extensive measures to scrutinize and control online public opinion." A former Sina Weibo content reviewer, Liu Liping, shared his thoughts on the CCP's online censorship on BBC. According to Liu, who worked as a government-appointed content reviewer from 2011 to 2013, the number of directives he received to delete posts and block sensitive keywords increased significantly over time. Initially, he received about a dozen directives per day, but eventually this number grew to several dozen, and in later stages exceeded 200 directives in a single day. Liu explained that when he applied for the position of a Weibo editor. The job description emphasized the need for political sensitivity. Though he suspected that the role might involve content censorship, he joined out of curiosity due to a lack of understanding of the specific responsibilities of a content reviewer. Liu disclosed that he didn't undergo formal training before starting the job, and he believed that any individual born and educated in China, holding a university degree, should understand what is referred to as the Chinese version of political correctness. In terms of identifying sensitive keywords, the CCP's indoctrination efforts were notably successful. Liu Lipeng's years of experience in content censorship made him keenly aware of the facade of false public opinion in China and the underlying complexities. By sharing his experiences, he aims to shed light on this daily reality in China.